When you think of British computer manufacturers, you probably think of names like Amstrad or Acorn, or even Sinclair. However, in 1965, a company was formed called Applied Computer Techniques, later changing their name to Apricot Computers. They had success in the business sector before moving into the home. They were then acquired by Mitsubishi Electrics as a way into the home computer market. What set Apricot Computers apart from other IBM compatibles in the 80s and 90s was their original equipment design goal. With the exception of the integrated circuit and some add-on boards, all parts of Apricot machines were manufactured in-house. This allowed Apricot to make very reliable computers which were often very advanced for their time. Apricot released the first all-in-one with a 3.5 inch floppy drive even before Apple. They were shipping computer systems with USB ports within months of the USB standard being launched. In fact, even before Windows 95, OSR2 or Windows 98 SE were even released. 98 wasn't released until June 98, two years after USB. Apricot were also the first to market the 486 line of processors. They were always very quick to jump on new technology and innovations. Unfortunately, this also meant Apricot found themselves locked into some tech that would not get much market traction and they would ultimately struggle to compete against likes of Packard Bell and Dell computers who would undercut the cost of the home computer. In 2001, Mitsubishi gave up on Apricot and they offloaded final end-of-life support to open systems engineering. It's a shame that no one really talks about Apricot computers anymore as overall their machines were very reliable and very secure and for me they would always hold a special place in my heart because it was an Apricot MS540 which introduced me to PCs and that was in the mid 90s and that's the computer which we're going to be looking at today is the MS540 based on a, the same chassis as the Zen computer and other MS series computers. I unfortunately hit a snag straight away and that was because the computer has a fingerprint password on there. The seller on eBay did state there'd be a password on boot up but I kind of naively assumed that a BIOS reset would resolve this. Unfortunately that did not. A BIOS reset didn't help. I tried removing the CMOS battery etc. Resetting the BIOS. Nothing would help. I did a lot of research online to try and work out how to get around this problem and the company which previously unlocked passwords open systems engineering as previously mentioned they now no longer exist but thankfully with the help of many people online i was able to find out that there's a bug in the bios which means if you right protect the bios you are able to get around this password so now the password's off the machine where you can boot into windows 95 and this is the first time it's booted up probably since the early noughties when the seller first sold this machine to the seller who would then sell it on to me I, I guess he probably lost his password so yeah it's definitely um, a bit of a time machine this one so what we can do is restore this machine back so we'll just have a quick look at the box that the machine came in uh, so it came boxed a few of the accessories but the one we got here I do apologize for the shaky camera has 120 megahertz intel pension processor we'll be upgrading that to 166 megahertz during this video sound blaster audio which is actually really good in terms of compatibility um, and never had any issues with it before an ati onboard graphics chipset of 2 meg of ram not upgraded will be on 2 meg but we will be putting in a additional graphics card into this machine and then also an additional sound card as well but we'll come to that shortly and there's 16 megabytes of system ram on here as well so the specs of this machine came in range from 120 megahertz intel pentium up to 200 megahertz you could get um, a little bit more with an overdrive processor came with either 8 or 16 meg of ram the one we got here is 16 meg of ram um, and they all came with the ati rage graphics chipset as well the machine here to take it out of the box put it on the uh, on a towel on my table just so I don't scratch the table and it's in fairly good condition I mean you know this has been in someone's loft I'm guessing so it is a very mucky um, very dusty but there's no scratches or dents which is really good to see on a computer which you know is what, 14 years old 13 14 years old um, on the back here as you can see there's a fair bit of grease grime and, and dirt but no scratches that i can see no dents cracks nothing at all like that so that's really impressive i'm really pleased with the quality of this machine we will of course give it a nice clean um shortly but i'm, I'm happy with it i think you know considering it was online very cheap presumably because of that password if, um, i'm over the moon now that the password's off we can get this tidied up starting with uh, the inside of the machine which as you can see it is very dusty to say the least um, again considering how old the machine is and I'm guessing it's never been cleaned it's not terrible but we definitely need to give this a nice wipe down and clean um, 
because it's, it is covered in dust and uh, especially towards the front of the machine but yeah no it looks like in good nick with the original parts as we can see by this mitsubishi electric um floppy drive from may 1996 i'm going to put in here this atr rage graphics card pci card 16 mega ram this is also a tv card as a tv card was an option at the time and here's a creative labs sound blaster 16 sound card which will give us a uh, true opl free support it's got opl on board which is a make it an excellent card to upgrade the onboard sound right so let's speed the video along as i take the computer apart to give it a good clean we'll remove the CMOS battery because we need to put a new one in as this one is long but dead. There's also two AA batteries on the riser board which need changing as well so we'll get those swapped over get the drives removed so we can get easy access to the front which um, the drives are in pretty good condition to be honest overall. Here's one of the AA batteries from the riser board which actually expired in May 2001. So I've removed the riser board which as you can see has three riser slots and a PCI slot on this side and the AA battery slots and on the other side is one PCI and one riser slot. So we're giving it now a wipe down and a brush with a toothbrush just to get some of the bigger bits of debris removed. And now we're going to take off the front fascia, which as you can see has loads of dust and dirt behind it. We'll get this removed and I'll wash it down in the bath and give it a good clean. We'll get rid of the big dust first. Now I'm doing this on the floor purely for this reason, because of all this dust. It's pretty mucky and we'll need to be hoovered up. Okay, so I've got the front fascia cleaned up, put it in the sink and washed it down. As you can see, it's a lot better now than it was, no dirt or grime. It actually looks like new, to be honest, really nice and clean, no dirt anywhere, and I'll leave it to dry properly. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is use some contact cleaner and just spray that on the board. That will get rid of a lot of grease, a lot of dust and debris, um, and it also deoxidizes contacts as well. So we'll give the board a nice spray. Get into all the gaps and contacts. Now this is non-conductive, but you do want to do this obviously when the computer's not plugged in. Get into all the ports and so slots that you can. And now we'll go back over with the brush, make sure we get into all the ports and slots. And now this just allows any debris that's been lifted by the contact cleaner just to be brushed aside. And as you can see, it's making quite a bit of a nice difference. Give it a good go over again, just a second time over after giving it a brush down. And making sure to be very thorough as well. And this is how the board looks now, nice and clean. So we'll do the same with the riser board, so we've got the new batteries in there, so we'll just give us now a good spray. And same with the Ethernet card, spray that down and both sides but also into the contacts as well. And for the sound card we do the same. Now the sound card you do uh, not only want to do the front and also the rear but you also want to make sure to get into all the ports as well because you don't want to have a bad contact there with your, onto your speaker output. nice and clean as you can see a nice shiny sound card will dry fairly quickly now we'll do the same with the graphics card give it a spray down trying to be nice and thorough make sure every every part of it gets covered in contact cleaner and there we go a nice looking ATI all-in-wonder card 
and I've got here an ID to combat flash converter to replace the old hard drive. Okay, let's get the computer put back together and I'll speed up the video just in the interest of time as I don't want to bore you all. Put the modem back in. We'll put the graphics card in next. Next I'll put the compact flashed IDE bracket in and now the ethernet card. And now we put in the Sound Blaster 16 ISA card. Put the CD-ROM drive in there and then we'll just get that screwed back in. And in goes the floppy disk drive as well, which you can see is quite a tight fit at this point. Okay, so that's the computer put back together and the case back on. So all we need to do now is clean off any dust, dirt and grime. So we're going to be using rubbing alcohol to begin with, just to clean off the case. It's already fairly clean, but it's been in someone's loft for goodness knows how many years, 14, 15 years. So just give us a nice wipe down. It means it should be free of bacteria. It will look nice and clean. Make sure we we'll get into all of the gaps in the front and side. Now for the back, we're going to use contact cleaner just to go back over the, the add-on cards but also the ports at the bottom as well. Make sure they're nice and clean. You don't want to use compressed air for this because compressed air will just push dust and debris deeper inside. Whereas this will degrease and also get rid of any oxidisation as well. So there we go for the first going over with the rubbing alcohol car we'll re go back over it again at some point but just for a quick clean up it looks a lot better than it did before a lot less dust and grime the front face has been underwater anyway rubbing alcohol has got rid of a lot of that dust and we've used the cloth to get into some of the tighter to reach areas as well it looks a lot better quite happy with how this has turned out i know it doesn't really sharp with the grainy camera but on the back here we can see that the ports are a lot more shiny than they were to begin with nice and clean i'm a lot happier with that the same can't be said for the keyboard which as you can see is absolutely filthy this is actually my original keyboard from 96 and i've never cleaned it i've only recently found it in the loft so it is filthy and we're going to give this a nice clean now as part of the cleaning we'll be using baking soda as advocated on the retro man cave channel so with all the keys now removed, you can see what we're working with is filthy. So we've got all the keys off and we can start cleaning this up, beginning with dismantling the keyboard. So now with the case off, we can use baking soda on the case itself, just gently rub that in. Don't want to go over the top because it is an abrasive, but this will lift a lot of grime from the plastic. And you see even after a few moments of gentle rubbing on the plastic, it looks a lot better than it did before. I won't retro bright the plastic because it does already look like the original colour. Okay, the next thing is to rub the keys in this solution of rubbing alcohol, vinegar and also cleaning fluid. And it is worth cleaning every single key before leaving them to dry overnight. And this is the outcome the following day. They're dry and all keys have been washed and look nice and clean. Look a lot better than they did before. I'm really pleased with this. Okay, so the next the case, which as you can see looks a lot better than before. Nice and clean. And all back together again, the keyboard looks, well I'll be honest, it looks a lot better. Nice, clean, all the keys look excellent. I may at some point maybe retro it, but there's not really a lot of yellowing at all. Um, only a little bit of discoloration on tops of some of the keys. I found some RAM in my drawers. I've got 64 megabyte of RAM here, but I'm not so sure if I will put it in that computer because it only ever went up to 16 meg at a factory, so I'm a bit unsure about that. Okay, so now that the cleaning is done and everything's put back together, let's power the machine on and check everything works and then of course get Windows installed. So it does a RAM check and it should go up to 16 meg. Indeed it does, perfect. Let's go into the BIOS and check everything is in order. Okay, so now we're in the BIOS, let's have a look. So yep, that's detecting the CP 166 MHz and we've got a 16 MB of RAM and a 4GB compact flash card is installed as well. 
Okay, so let's restart the computer now, and then we can go into the Windows setup. Uh, so it'll be Windows 98 that I'm putting on here, but the good thing with a compact flash card on the rear is I could always put DOS or Windows 95 on another compact flash card. So we'll just boot to the floppy disk drive now. Okay, there we go, so that's booted for the Windows 98 startup menu. Um, so I said it's a floppy disk, I mean CD-ROM, uh, this is a bootable CD-ROM. Um, I do have a startup disk for Windows 95 but not 98 to hand. Wait for this to go through everything it needs to check. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to rush through setup as you can see here. I'm going to jump ahead through various points because you don't want to sit through the whole setup process. I'm sure you've all seen Windows 90 get set up. Entering my details there. And then uh, jump ahead to that uh, setup. So the thing which I like about Windows 98 is it will make full use of the All-in-One Rage 128 graphics card, Sound Blast 16 sound card, and the USB ports as well. Um, I do have a copy of Windows 95 OSR2, which I might put on another compact flash card, undecided at the moment. Okay, so that's Windows 98 setup now complete and we're on the desktop and this is a lot more responsive than the old install of the old hard drive and everything looks to be okay other than the modem which I'm not concerned about. It's found the sound blaster, it's found the USB devices on there as well. Battery Ethernet card, yep that's found, it's perfect and any issues with the ID controller, all looks fine. I think that's um, quite a good first reboot after setup. So let's get the graphics card driver now installed and this will allow us to make full use of the 3D capabilities of the ATI All-in-One Rage 128 card. Uh, it's got 16 meg of video RAM on board and even though it is a TV tuner as well, hence these drivers, that was actually an option for this apricot. You could have a TV card um, as an optional extra at the time which is quite, you know, quite advanced for 96. I do uh, have to say excuse the flickering on the monitor, that's purely because the camera is out of sync with the CRT. I've tried to create it as best as I can but which is not perfect. So we get these drivers and install it off of the disc. So Windows 98 is generally pretty good with drivers. Um, it seems to be finding the uh, drivers for the sound blaster card without even installing that yet which is what we'll do in a moment. Windows to settle down and check that everything is still in order. Have this show up every time. Right, let's get the sound card drivers now installed. We'll go for full installation. I will redo this for DOS as well, just to be sure that DOS works. Um, it seems to have detected everything absolutely fine. We'll run diagnosis afterwards. I'll we'll install this across. Um, I do like the Sound Blast 16, it is a good card. It has a few issues like hanging note bugs, which I think this card is impacted by. But overall, it's a good card. I could put an All32 in, but it seems excessive. Let's update the Auto Exec Bat, so uh, DOS program should work fine, but I will reinstall this with DOS as well. Okay, so let's run the diagnose software, let's check that everything is found and working. It's fine in the card, absolutely perfectly, no issues at all. There's no configuration in the virus or anything, it's just taken it. Probably from where the onboard was present previously, I guess, I'm not sure. Let's test it. Sounds good. Let's try the 16 bit. Sounds good. I'm sorry that the audio level is quite low on the recording. And that sounds good as well. So we'll update that and then uh, we'll move on. Okay, so after another reboot after in the sound card, let's make Windows a bit more personal. So 
Obviously, you're going to have to have the clouds background. It's got to be done. And uh, we'll make this 32 bit true color as well. Let's now check system. Everything looks in order. Still no modem drivers, which I'm not worried about. We've got a sound card and graphics card all showing up fine. Everything looks good. Everything's present. No problems to our all in one the one twenty eight card. And this is the final product, all cleaned up and now on my desk with a nice CRT monitor stuck on top. Uh, I do excuse the focus and graininess of the video, it's just filmed late at night, but everything looks to be working. It's now got 60 meg of system RAM, meg up to 64 meg. We've got in there a 4 gigabyte compact flash IDE hard, hard drive replacement. There's the Sound Blaster 16, ATI Rage all in one card, 60 meg of video RAM, and an Intel Pentium 166 megahertz Pentium processor. And in a moment, we'll play some games using the line in audio to really appreciate the Sound Blaster card that's in there and to end this video. Okay, I hope you all like this video. Thank you very much for watching and your support. Don't forget to like and subscribe and also do check out the Retro Man Caves channel. He's a really nice guy and makes some great videos. Basically, if you like my videos, you just wish that they were done a bit more professional. Then, uh, his channel is definitely well worth checking out as his videos are way better than mine. But I appreciate his help. I appreciate you all watching my video and your support. Thank you very much. brought us a note. It's from my old friend, Green Tentacle. He says that Purple Tentacle's mutated into an insane genius, and Dr. Fred's going to kill them both. I thought I was free of Dr. Fred and those crazy Edisons forever. But now, I know that I must go back to the mansions.